Hello everyone, welcome to my The Young and the Restless Homies official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on The Young and the Restless, Thursday, December 21, 2023, Jack spills the beans on Tucker, Nate overhears Nikki drinking, and Jordan contacts Claire after she goes missing. What do we do next? Ashley asks Jack at the Abbott residence after the agreement with Tucker is completed. According to Jack, they will then administer the first strike of the one-two punch. Once I push in this damning information is going to go out to every major news outlet in the world. It will undermine his credibility. Ashley believes his ego told him that he couldn't be affected by this, but he's about to discover otherwise. She laments that she had so many dreams for Glissade, Tucker, and herself, and they've all blown up in her face. Jack asks whether she is certain she is ready to go. It might not be easy. Tucker's professional light will go up in flames once he presses the send button. Do you have second thoughts? Ashley wonders whether he's searching for an excuse to avoid taking the next step. Jack is perplexed by her deflection. Ashley claims she has no second thoughts. Having said that, she feels sorry for him because he is about to lose everything. She will not allow him damage their father's heritage, but she will not rejoice. He is Devin's father as well as Dom's grandfather. This is Tucker's mess to clean up, Jack sneers, referring to Devin's knowledge of his father. Ashley goes on to remark, Thankfully, he can't do anything to hurt Jibbut anymore, right? Jack responds, Right. Ashley claims he could have simply left them alone. He can only blame himself. Do it. Go on. Billy and Chelsea toast him officially joining Chancellor Winters at Society. It's time to get things started. Chelsea wonders what will happen when Lily returns. Billy is concerned about ensuring Devin and Jill's well-being. He informs her that Nate will also be returning. Chelsea is astonished. But she observes that they've all made mistakes and needed second chances. Billy informs Chance that he is also mentoring him, which his nephew is not enthused about considering his track record. He was powerless to argue with him. Chelsea defends Billy but expresses concern over the career transition. She hopes she didn't push him to do something he'll come to regret. Billy makes fun of her protectiveness and tells her that Chance and Nate will be oak. After his conversation with Jack, he feels as if a weight has been lifted from his shoulders. He thought Jabot was the appropriate place for him. But it became too much for him with Kyle, Diane, and Tucker. Billy reveals that he aspired to be a hero in order to honor his father's heritage. Chelsea speculates that he is now returning to Chancellor for his mother. You want to protect her legacy from Tucker. She wonders what makes it different from Jabot. Kyle meets Audra at Crimson Lights, who remarks that it took him a bit to respond to her text. She wondered whether he was reconsidering their strategy yet again. Tucker said he'd never abandon her in the cold. Kyle counters, that doesn't mean it's a sure thing. He warns her that something major is going to happen. When Nikki and Victor enter the jazz lounge, he exclaims that it's a great place to unwind and forget about their problems. She excuses herself to use the restroom and climbs up the stairs, pausing to look around before taking a drink from her flask. Nate appears on the stairs as Nikki replaces her flask and inquires as to what she is doing. I have no idea what you're talking about, she sniffs and rushes up the stairs. Victoria arrives at Memorial, but Claire's room is empty. Victoria unpacks a backpack she brought with her and discovers a bracelet on the bed. She sees Jordan in the lake home and recognizes the jewelry she was wearing. When an orderly enters with a tray, Victoria inquires if Claire is in a meeting. He explains that nothing is planned for dinner. Victoria insists on speaking with security. At the Abbott residence, Jack presses the send button and tells Ashley, there's no turning back now. Anything associated with Glissade will either depart ship or band together to drive him off. Tucker McCall and his brand are about to flatline. Kyle informs Audra at Crimson Lights that the McCall scandal involving the singer is soon to make headlines. Audra is terrified that they will be able to talk to his family and prevent this from happening. There has to be something you can do to stop this. 
Kyle claims he tried everything he could. But it was in vain. What was I meant to say? Don't go after Tucker because it will jeopardize my future work prospects. Tucker did this to himself and to you. He protests. Audra screams that she's worked too hard and for too long for this to happen. Kyle said he urged his father to keep her out of this. Audra concludes that Tucker was correct about Kyle. You were involved in the plot. You kept me occupied and distracted while Jack got things started. Kyle, tell the truth. You were just taking advantage of me, weren't you? Tucker composes a message to the employees of Glissade, welcoming them to their next major adventure in his suite. A signal chimes and the breaking news. Tucker McCall complicit in criminal cover-up appears. Tucker exclaims, son of a bitch. Nate approaches Nikki outside the GCAC and asks, can we talk? Nikki inquires as to what they intend to discuss. Nate claims she drank from the flask in her purse before popping some mints to mask the odor of alcohol. Wow, making things up again, are you? Grits Nikki. She warns him not to share that untruth. Nate insists on carrying and inquires as to how long she has been off the wagon. Nikki tells him it's none of his damn business and reminds him that he was dismissed. Whatever happens in their family is none of his business. Nate is still concerned about the well-being of others around him. Nikki threatens to contact the cops. Nate is concerned that her MS has caused a relapse. She storms off, warning him to stay out of her life. Victoria interrogates the security guard at the hospital, who admits to seeing a woman earlier who he mistook for a new hire. She wore a badge and had blonde hair. Victoria realizes it was most likely a wig. She informs him that the woman is exceedingly dangerous and that the cops are looking for her. They must locate her and the young woman who is most likely accompanying her. Victoria phones Cole to inform him that Claire has gone missing. It only gets worse. I discovered a bracelet on her pillow. It was identical to the one Jordan was wearing at the lake house. I believe Jordan. She must have sneaked in disguised as a nurse, as she did the first time she took Claire from us. Cole, I just know she has our daughter, and she's so vulnerable and afraid. The security guard returns and informs Victoria that security footage shows the blonde woman departing in a wheelchair with Claire. Victoria asks Cole if he heard what she said. He has done so, and he is on his way. Nate walks into the lounge and apologizes for disrupting Victor. Victor informs him that he has said everything that has to be spoken to him. Nate requests that Victor listen to him out. He learned that his family had lately been through something horrific, and that Nikki had a seizure. How did you hear that? Victor exclaims. Nate doesn't know the specifics. All he knows is that it hasn't put any of them in a difficult predicament. Victor inquires as to what he is fishing for. Nate claims that this isn't about him wanting another go at Newman. And for the record, I never tried to betray you. Victor argues that he had ulterior motivations and that he was caught. End of story. Audra leaves a message for Tucker at Crimson Lights, then goes to yelling at Kyle, who claims that this was not a betrayal. He persuaded his father to remove her name from all of the emails before coming to warn her. She asks, So, you didn't know about any of this until today? Kyle claims that his father is concealing all essential information from him right now because my father doesn't trust me. That's why he joined her and Tucker. Audra predicts that Tucker will lash out. She staked her entire career on it, and now it's all over. It will eliminate Tucker and his connection to Glissade, and without Glissade, they will be unable to attack Jibut. Kyle assures her that there is yet hope. He's created the ideal product for Glissade to steal from Jabut. Audra screams fiercely. What good will that be when there is no company left to develop it? Jack's doorbell rings nonstop. He responds, and Tucker enters, exclaiming, Hey Jack, are you surprised to see me? What brings you by? Jack inquires. Tucker continues to rage until Ashley appears. This move coming from him? I could have predicted that. It was inevitable. He adds to her. But I didn't anticipate this from you. As Jack chuckles at Tucker's amputation, McCall says to Ashley, 
I thought we agreed not to let our separation turn into a war. If that's what you're looking for, sweetheart, you've got it. He assures Jack that he is far from finished. Billy informs Chelsea, at society, that the difference between Jabot and Chancellor is Jack. Moving on is the correct course of action. He promises to discuss it if confronting Tucker reignites the competitive fires. What is my legacy? He acknowledges is the one question that still worries him. He still can't answer life's most basic but deep question, what is my purpose? Chelsea is concerned that she has forced him into this situation. Billy is concerned about what people will say about him after he is gone. He's looking forward to his new chapter because it will help him discover his true calling. Chelsea believes her push was beneficial. Don't feel bad, okay, Billy says, because I'm feeling fantastic, and you should be as well. Cole arrives at the hospital, where a heartbroken Victoria informs him that the police have been notified. Cole has no idea why Jordan would risk showing up there or how she got out of there. Victoria claims that she had her in a wheelchair wrapped in a blanket and transported her to the main hospital where security isn't as strict. They are concerned about Jordan manipulating Claire, who is already damaged. Cole assures them that they will find their daughter. Nate is worried about the GCAC doors that Nikki has taken off in the car. She shouldn't be driving. This goes no further than right here, Victor cautions. Do you understand? Stay out of our family's business from now on. Nikki enters the ranch and heads straight to the bar. Before she can pour herself a drink, she receives a phone call from an unknown number. She responds and inquires as to who it is. Jordan responds, Good day, Nikki. Have you enjoyed our recent communication? Stop calling me, screams Nikki. Does the music bring back memories? Jordan inquires. Nikki informs her that the cops are hunting for her. Jordan had already tracked her down, watching your every move. Of course, at a safe distance. Stay away from me, you demented bitch, hisses Nikki. Does it sing to you, Nikki? Jordan wonders. The booze. Does it remove all of the sharp edges? How does it feel when the liquor gets into your veins? You owe it to me to thank me. I've returned something you requested. And, my friend, you're about to have another drink, aren't you? Yeah, I've been drinking, Nikki admits. I'm now inebriated. What does it mean to you? Jordan grins. Tucker considers speaking with management. Have you seen the internet? She demands in response to his failure to react to her messages. She complains that Kyle informed her too late. Tucker mutters, What a surprise, and claims Kyle is the least of their worries right now. She believes they can still save the situation and wonders what they should do next. Tucker shakes his head. I'm not sure. It's not that easy. This folly was not fired solely by Jack. He's not the only one they should be concerned about. Audra cautions him not to lose concentration, but he thinks, Ashley sure got her revenge on me, in abundance. Kyle walks into the Abbott estate and proclaims that the news about Tucker is all over the place. We're celebrating. Jack exclaims, pouring a toast. Ashley reflects, some of us more than others. They all raise their glasses to Tucker McCall's demise. Victoria and Cole locate Victor at the GCAC and she informs her father that Jordan is in the hospital. She infiltrated the building and took Claire with her. They couldn't have traveled very far, according to Victor. He must travel to the property in order to warn Nikki. When he goes out, Victoria looks surprised and says, Keep me posted. Nikki is still on the phone with Jordan at the ranch, who tells her, The liquor makes you so much more interesting, Nikki. But I need you to stay calm and hold it together. Just a little bit longer. Stay calm for what? Nikki inquires. Shut up and listen to me. Jordan hisses. Claire is mine. Don't you remember Claire? Your granddaughter's name. Victoria's first child. No, you don't. Nikki sneers. She's been admitted to the hospital. No. Jordan says, she's with me. She lied to me. She betrayed the strategy. She preferred Victoria to me. I'm the one who reared her. She's the only person who has ever loved her. Nikki scoffs. 
like you know anything about love. Victoria abandoned her and left her for dead. So here's what we do. Jordan continues. If Victoria ever wants to see precious little Claire again, we'll have to make a small deal. Her mother for her daughter. The young and the restless continues with Michael thinking outside the box to surprise Lauren, Daniel being reminded of the true meaning of Christmas, and Phyllis stuffing coal into Christine's stocking. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.